Hey guys, I'm Tamika and welcome to Mika Tart, the show that promises to be fun, entertaining and light-hearted. Hey guys, I'm Tamika and you know what time it is? It is time for Mika Thoughts. I was thinking about love and there's a particular scripture in the Bible that I absolutely love and no, I'm not going to preach to you. But it says, above all, guard the affections of your heart. Now, I want you to think about it. How different would your life be if you had ended up with someone else? So it's something to really explore. And that's why I think it's important that in making a decision as to who you want to partner with, who you want to live your life with, you take that decision with absolute care because it can change the, the complete trajectory. It can change the direction that your life goes in. So above all else, guard the affections of your heart. Be careful who you align yourself with. Be careful who you partner with. Okay, so pause for a moment and think about that. He is a gynecologist by day, troublemaker by night, who dabbles in the art, comedy, drawing, basically everything art. I'm very happy to have on my channel Dr. Michael Abrahams. Thanks for having me. Um, this this troublemaker by night. <laughs> I want to know what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> it means well, you know exactly me. how it sounds. <laughs> Show me a cat me. I like much, that. Let me tell you how much I know about you. <laughs> I wore black because I knew you were going to wear black. You almost always wear black for interviews. That's scary. You've been stalking me. Yeah. <laughs> what else you know? Nah. <laughs> is black your favorite color? Ah, uh, I think nowadays it is. I tend to like black a lot. I wear black because I'm so pale, I'm invisible without it. So I like to wear stuff where people actually see me. So cars will hit me down on the road. That so I wear black. interesting. I like black. It contrasts with whatever this pale stuff is. Oh, uh, I see. I understand. Let me say something to you. Did you know that there is a Dr. Michael Abrahams that lives in Ohio and that does emergency medicine? That's a Michael Abrams with sense. That's cool. There's, there's another one in Florida who is a Rhodes Scholar. He went to University of the West Indies. He's in Florida. I think he did orthopedics. Really? So that's two smart Michael Abrams you have there. A three? What do you say? No, three. Well, yeah. they actually really are real doctors, but that's another story. <laughs> Speaking of real doctors, there's a picture of a cat. I've seen you posted it on your <coughs> Instagram page. And the cat is searching, and they say that this is what a gynecologist does. Is that true? That's that's incorrect. It's not a picture of a cat. It's a, it's a video of a cat. Well, I stand corrected. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's kind of what we do. I, I pretended that it wasn't funny, but it cracked me up for days. <laughs> I could not stop laughing. But what exactly are you looking for? Yeah, women often wonder what what on earth goes on <laughs> in these examinations. So. We use this instrument called a speculum, which most women tend to hate. I've heard them call it all kind of names like the, the noni jack, <laughs> or the ice cream scoop, or the duck bill, or the whatever it is. It's a speculum, okay? Okay. So it, when we do these examinations, we want to look at the vaginal walls, and we want to look at the cervix at the top, because you're supposed to have a cervix unless you've had a, a hysterectomy and the uterus is, it was taken out surgically. Mm -hmm. Um, so, unlike your mouth, you can't really open your vagina and go, ah, and we see all the way to the back. <laughs> unless definitely you, can't Unless you're ah. very talented. I know you can't do that because, of course not. Please. <laughs> so, we pass the instrument to part the walls so we can see the cervix. So, when the instrument is open, we look at the, the walls of the vagina and we look at the cervix because we have to visualize it properly, especially if we're doing our pap smear. So, that's what, that's what goes on. We're just looking to see what's going on inside. So to be a gynecologist, you definitely have to enjoy looking at people's private parts, yes? I don't know about enjoy looking at private parts. Like pe right, People tend to reduce my job to just <laughs> vagina pre -ment, yes, okay? Yes, 
And it's so much more than that. Vagina because doctors. Your fanning is very funny, right? I'm sorry, no. It's so funny for you, right? I'm sorry. So, <laughs> all right. So it's about looking after women. Straight. Mm-hmm. And there's so many facets to it. So when a woman comes for, for a consultation, you have a there's an interview or the history taking, then there's the examination. And the part where you look at the vagina is really a small part of the visit. If you think about it, if mm-hmm. you're in the room for 20 minutes, probably one minute or less is spent looking there, but people, for some reason, reduce it to that. <laughs> so it's, not a matter, it's a matter of enjoying looking after women. I, lo- I love looking after women a whole lot, a whole lot. So you had asked me earlier why I would say, or what does troublemaker by night mean? Yeah, what, that sounds that's, that don't sound right. What, what that mean? So let me tell you. A lot of the pieces, because you write or you contribute to the Gleaner, right? Yes. The newspaper. Yes. And a lot of your pieces have been quite controversial. Would you That's not? Would weird. you say? Would you, you wouldn't say that? It's this this thing about controversial is, is weird because I, I I I don't think of myself as being controversial at all. And then I'd write something mm-hmm. or, or or perform something, and people say it is. And to me, it's not. It's just how I think, and I'm 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 honest about how I think. And sometimes some people don't deal with that very well. But I'm just honest about what I think. Have you always been that way? Even as a child, were you very outspoken? It's weird. Not really. As, as a child, I, I didn't have that much self-confidence. So I was more of a people pleaser. You know, I think that's how most of my life had been until, until adulthood. And as I got older... I'm not sure when that all went away. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but I, I'm not the same person now in some respects because I will speak my mind about certain things and really not care about a backlash. Whereas, you know, when I was much younger, I'd be terrified. I don't know if it's maturity. It, I don't know, but, but I'm glad I'm at this place. I, I feel much freer now. And way, way, way. You're very comfortable with your opinions and your views. I am. Because I'm honest about them. I'm not trying to impress or please anyone. And I realize as I get older, I, you know, I, I introspect a lot. <clears throat> and I realize that I'm an empath, mm. which can be a good and a bad thing. Because on one hand, it helps me to understand how other people think. And that definitely helps me with, with my job. You know, And it has helped me to understand and empathize with people who are marginalized. And that sometimes is not a popular thing. So, for example, I empathize with women who've, who've had abortions because society tends to stigmatize them. I empathize with LGBT folks and many people revile them. And even with this vaccine thing going on now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for vaccination. Let me make that very clear. I'm, I'm fully vaccinated. But I also empathize with many people who are not. Be, because the unvaccinated are not a homogenous group by any means. You know, some people, some of them get on my nerves. <laughs> no, some of them are, are some one? of them get on my nerves. Which one but do you say? The persons who are, who are ignorant and arrogant and overestimate their understanding of science. Hmm. You know, there are some people who are just so ignorant and they're so arrogant with it. And, and <laughs> they really don't even understand how vaccines work. But they're adamant, I'm not going to take this. But you have a lot of people who are very intelligent who understand how vaccines work, who have genuine concerns. And, and it's unfair to me to put all of them together into one group. Right. You know, so, so I find that sometimes being an empath can, can you know, make people uncomfortable when you have a platform or a voice like I do. But that's just how I think. I believe in fairness and justice. I, 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 don't, like, I don't like discrimination or judgmental behavior. One of the things that I've noticed with you is that you've always been interested in defending the rights of others. Yes. Do you think you'd go into politics? No. I think you'd make no. a great it's too politician. Nasty. No? It's too nasty. It's too nasty. Hold on, you think I'd make a great politician? Really so. seriously though? No? That, that sentence can be <laughs> <Interviews over. laughs> Take no. down. <laughs> really? It can be seriously? Skewed, but wait, you'd make a good politician. That is not Whoa. an oxymoron. No. <laughs> Politicians are... You different breed, you know. 
I mean, again, I, I, I don't believe in generalizing. Right. Because some, some politicians are, 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 good. Are, are, are okay, I think, maybe. But, um, yeah. <laughs> no, there are some who are my friends and I admire them greatly. But, but politics is just nasty. And even, it's another thing, even in this country, for example, there are things that the PNP may have done that I'm uncomfortable with and I speak out against. And when I do that, here I'm a labor. Yeah, I do, yeah. There are the things the JLP has done that have deeply disturbed me. And when I talk about that, here I'm a comrade and I'm, I'm neither. I can tell you, I've, I've voted for both parties. Mm -hmm. But I've thought about it because people have encouraged me and said, you know, if you really want to make a change, that's the best place to be. But when I look on both sides of the divide there, there are some people on either side, on both sides that I think should be locked up for good. There are some people on both sides that I despise. I don't want to be anywhere near them because it's very dirty, it's very nasty. And the, the corruption is just everywhere. And it's difficult. I find a hard time dealing with that. I, 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 it's hard for me to sit at the table with someone who I know is corrupt like that. So I, I don't think it's for me, no. Maybe you could form your own party. No. Call it MAP. No. The politics is just too <laughs> nasty. But, but this is my perspective. So I love my country. So whoever is in power, I'm going to try to do my best to offer my services to help them because they have a platform. So, for example, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I will, and I have done that because this is my country. Mm -hmm. And if they're in a position of leadership and I have a platform, I'm willing to use that for the greater good, but, but not to enable any kind of corruption, no. Yeah. One of the things that you are very passionate about is childhood trauma. Yes. Why is that? Because I realize that childhood trauma is at the root of many of our societal ills. Not just in Jamaica, but globally. Mm -hmm. And so what we often see in adults is the end result of that. So a lot of adults who are dysfunctional, if you go back in the childhood, you realize that some just, there, there are a lot of scars, wounds that are unhealed. A few years ago, I went to a talk by this Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. She's an American physician of Jamaican parentage. And she gave a talk on this thing called ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences. And I would encourage everybody watching this to check out Nadine Burke Harris on YouTube, ACEs TED Talk. Anyway, ACEs are adverse childhood experiences. And there's a study done, the initial study was done, I think in the 80s. 80s or 90s in San Diego at this clinic called the Kaiser Permanente Clinic. Mm -hmm. And they looked at about 17,000 people and they looked at how adverse childhood experiences affected their, their lives during the course of a whole lifetime. And they looked at 10 adverse childhood experiences under three headings, abuse, neglect, and exposure to dysfunction in the home. So under abuse, they looked at physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. Under neglect, they looked at physical and emotional neglect. Under exposure to dysfunction in the home, they looked at exposure to domestic violence, drug abuse, mental illness, having a family member being incarcerated or divorced or separation, yeah. that's 10. And the higher people score on that is the more dysfunctional and unwell they are likely to be in adulthood. So by the time the A score reaches three or four, mm -hmm. your risk of being suicidal is about 12 times that of someone who scores wow. zero and your cancer risk is doubled. By the time it, your A score reaches seven or eight, your suicidal risk is about 20 times that of someone who scores zero. Your cancer risk is tripled. And, and the bottom line is they found that chronic stress or toxic stress can lead to these problems that persist in adulthood. And it's not just about being mentally unwell, but even physical illness. Adverse childhood experiences have been linked to over 40 different illnesses in adulthood. And, you know, conditions ranging from obesity and drug abuse, hypertension, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, asthma. Childhood trauma can lead people to make decisions that are not in their best interest. So for example, a woman may be a, a survivor of, of childhood sexual abuse, right. with an absent father in the home. And those are two risk factors for um, situations such as teen pregnancy, abortion, STIs. And because of that trauma, as she becomes a woman, she may be looking for, as I say, looking for love in the wrong places, mm. choosing partners that are inappropriate, partners that are toxic, and this causes toxic relationships. You bring a child into that relationship, the child is traumatized. 
and the child grows up traumatized and the cycle continues and these things become generational. So it's important to educate <clears throat> people about what ACEs are so we know what they are, we know how to avoid them, we know how to manage them because our society is really a mess. Our society is screwed. Mm. The, the level of violence and indiscipline and aggression, it is. And, and we have to look at this. We, we tend to live in a punitive society. So somebody does something wrong, the, 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 the way to deal with it is, you know, just give them some bitch lick. <laughs> no, give them some give them two bitch lick. A child is misbehaving, give, give them two bitch lick. No, because the violence just causes more aggression. We're looking at the end result. We have to, what we have to find out is, why is this person so dysfunctional? I remember meeting a, a patient in my office who had five children for five different men. Wow. She had four for four different men, was pregnant for a fifth man who died. Wow. And another man met her when she was pregnant and decided to be in a relationship. And her plan was that when she delivered this baby, have a baby for the sixth man. <laughs> so, so I went into her childhood and I asked her a question. Um, what was your, who did you grow up with? Because I find when I ask people, who did you grow up with or what was your childhood like? you learn a lot from that and she said to me um she grew up all over the place and and that meant an unstable childhood her father left her mother hated her because she reminded her of her father um her mother tried to push her off the bed and kill her when she was a child yeah. her mother would abuse her by telling her she wished she had died when she was in labor her mother had a partner who sexually molested her and I, i'm doing the ace score as i'm talking to her and by the time i finished i asked her a question um when did you last try to kill yourself I didn't ask her if it was when right. it was last year. Wow. I said to her, you used to, you used to fight in school a lot, right? Yes, because that trauma causes aggression. So rather than marginalizing these kids, you, you find out, why is this child so aggressive? Why, why is this girl having sex with so many boys? Why is this boy like this? Instead of just punishing. Find and, out and, the root cause. Yes. And as a country, you believe our response should be what? To understand the roots of these problems and, and to educate, to educate and let everybody understand. Um, last year, I'd actually reached out to the Minister of Education. It was interesting because I didn't know favor before. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I said, you know, I have this idea. How about in, in schools, as children just start to go to school, we have these classes where you teach them about empathy, compassion, kindness, respect, boundaries, consent, all of those things. And, and she's on the same, she was on the same pathway because she had announced that kids are going to start getting a passport in school and learning how to drive, looking at life skills. Mm -hmm. and, and this whole concept is, is, is called character education. And um, as I said before, I'm a Jamaican. You're in power. I'm going to see what I can do. So you know, I became involved because it's something I'm passionate about. And that's something being actively looked at by the ministry now. Oh, that's great. So, and this character education is not only to teach the kids, but the teachers, parents, everybody has to understand. And, and what we've learned is that this has to be um, trauma informed because a lot of the dysfunctional behavior comes from trauma. A lot of us are traumatized. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need you. For Prime Minister, MAP. No star, I mean, I know that. and this will be no, yours. You know how no. PNP and JLP, uh -uh. they have, you know, this will be yours. I mean, I know P. This, this will be yours. No, man. This will be your hand gesture. Just this. What's that? That's yours. What does that mean? <laughs> where does know. that come from? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you're a man. I, I didn't want to hands. know where that came from. <laughs> right? That's, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one at all. <laughs> so, and you've really shed a lot of light on a lot of things. And that is one of the things I really appreciate about you. Even when you're giving it from a very comedic standpoint, you are still informing and educating. So on behalf of all of Jamaica, I thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's, the interview's not over. We're going to play a game. Okay, good. Because I was having fun. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Stop. Well, a game? What do you mean a game? I didn't know about this. G so you have not been watching the channel because we play games with everybody. We love games. Oh, God. Let me drink some more of this. <laughs> what kind of game is that now? So this game I have for you is called... My big mind, I don't play games. Get into that. So what should I call this? Wrong person. What should I call this now? Wrong person. You invited her. All right. So I have something that I want to do with you. 
people are watching a capture. <laughs> really? What, 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 what could that be then? So it's, it's, it's just a little thing and it's called, Can You Do It? Oh God. Here we go. So, For those watching, this is in a hotel room. I'm intimidated. What are you I, doing? I'm, I'm intimidated. I, this is intimidating. I'm drinking some more of this stuff. A woman asked me, can you do it? It's, it's weird. I, this, I wasn't expecting this. So let me tell you what it is. I'm going to give you a word. And because you're oh, very God. poetic, I'll give you the word. And you have four lines. And you need to use the word in those four lines of a poem. And make a poem about it. Four lines, four one lines? word. All right. I have to, I have to use one word. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a word and you make up a poem about it. And the poem should have four lines. So you don't have to use the word within the poem. I just need to make sure that the poem is about that word. Ah, I want to call my mommy. <laughs> it's not so bad. But she, she, she this passed, is something you do every day. She passed away recently though. Oh no. You have like a Ouija board? Like a seance thing? Why would you do? Why would you? Why? I, I need her. No. Okay, let's go. I, I don't even want to go again. I don't want to go again. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one is definitely not a Ouija board. Go. So. <laughs> let's go. All right. First word, love. Mm, that's it? Uh-huh. Okay. What is this thing called love? Something you always hear people speak of is like, sometimes it drink like a dog, but sometimes it come in like a big dirty junk. Huh? <laughs> the end. I'm sorry. I said I would have more composure, but. But you lied. <laughs> I lied terribly. A big dirty junk, huh? Yeah, it's, let me tell you. It's not really loving as the effects it has on people when it goes bad. Love is a beautiful thing. Right. It is, but sometimes it's like a drug. And when it works, it's beautiful. But when it's not reciprocated, it can, yeah, yeah. can mash you up. All right, the second one. Beauty. Oh, my gosh. You are going bad with the one, you know? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. You gave it to me. I'm sorry. Your next word <laughs> is beauty. I'm just going right into character. Did you so, see that? Did you see that? Go on. Beauty. Why the girl is a work of beauty. Just cast that look on her beauty. <laughs> I tell you the truth. Me, but I love to bear that tooty fruity. And... Oh, four lines gone already. Sorry, I was getting into it. But no, but finish. You said four lines. No, finish. You, you said four lines. You fruity and? It probably is. All right, next one. You don't want to hear the rest. Yeah. <laughs> My head hurting me. <laughs> so. <sighs> ah, tutti frutti. Right. Your final word. Corruption. <clears throat> All right. Well, when it comes to this thing called corruption, there's just no interruption. What if a disruption or eruption? That's four lines. It, but I want to hear more. You want to hear more? You said four lines. <laughs> no, this one too good. No, I, I need to hear the end. I need some more. You need some more? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the way this country I go, national bird should be a John Crow. God, there must teeth and teeth like there's no end and all the money I pay them for tax, they must have spend, spend with them friends upon them ends. Yeah. I don't mean, like corruption. I don't mean, deal with it at all because them man, they're supposed to be upon the ball, but they must have stall. Corruption, no. Firebound for that because I don't mean, support them in the system. To be continued. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Michael Abraham. Can 
You do it, yes. Well, what's in that drawer? Can. Wow, that sounds Ooh, exciting now. Yes. Wow, is this is this 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 is the fun part of the show now? Yes. I ask if you can do it, and you did it. <laughs> and because you love black so much, oh, you know I them things. Have... That's so cool, though. <laughs> I love that. Yes. So here you go, because you did it, and you did it well. You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I but, love this. This is so cool. Look at this. Me cut heart. That's so cool. And you know I love black. Yes, I do. You been stalking me? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. Mika, for this coming. is really cool. This is really cool. Thanks a lot. You are welcome. And make sure when you wear it, your tagos. Make sure people see know what we're about. All these things. Yes, miss. It was great. Yes. It was really fun. It was more fun than I thought you would have been. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And I'm really happy that you you were able to speak to childhood trauma. A lot of people needed to know that. So thank you yeah. for coming. Thanks, nice, Mika. So this is it now. It finished already? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, can I go back again? No! That's it? It's no, over? Yeah, you're supposed to smile for the camera so they know it's done. It's over? That's how it works. Or smile, yeah. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be the first to know when we post new content. And always remember, you can be the light that fights against the shadows.